Greetings, everyone, and welcome to our first class together at a distance. Um, before we left for spring break, we were talking about permutations in general, and in particular, we were talking about uh, a very special type of permutation called a transposition. I want to review some of that information and, uh, and then move forward. All right, so we're going to talk about some results regarding transpositions. Uh, first of all, recall that a transposition is a, uh, it's a permutation from the set of integers 1 through n into the set of integers 1 through n that, uh, that swaps two elements and, uh, and leaves the others fixed. Now, you'll recall a permutation is a function that is both one-to-one -one and onto. So this is a, a rearranging of the elements, the numbers one through n, and uh, it's doing it in such a way that only two of the elements are getting swapped. Everything else is, uh, is gonna be going to itself. So in particular, here, let's just uh, look at a particular example. So we'll, we'll consider a function f from the set one through five onto the set one through five. Uh, the one defined by f equals, well, the cycle, remember cycle notation, two, five. So this says uh, two gets sent to five, five gets sent to two, and uh, the absence of all the other elements from this cycle is our signal that f sends all other elements to themselves. So in particular, well, let's see. So f of, uh, let's start with f of two, right? So the, the function specifically says that two is going to go to five. So f of two, right, f of two is the number five. And similarly, over here, f of five, well, that's going to be two, right? So that's the values of the function that uh, for the for the elements that are actually included in the cycle, but as we said, if an element is not included in the cycle, that's our indication that F sends that element to itself. So F is gonna send one to one. It's gonna send three to three. It's gonna send four to four again, right? One, three, and four are not included in the, in the cycle, so they get fixed. I want you to recall also, this is one of the last things that we talked about before we left for spring break, is that every permutation can be expressed as a product of transpositions. And, and by product, uh, we're talking about composition, right? Composition is the operation on functions that, uh, that we're assuming. And so we saw that every permutation can be expressed as a product, a composition of transpositions. And let me recall why that was the case. Well, let's see. We saw that we could, uh, we could write, this is the function that sends two to five, sends five to four, sends four to two, and it fixes one, fixes three. And if if we were considering uh, other elements, if this were um, if this were a function from one through say sixteen, uh, I'm sorry, acting on a set, the set of elements from one through sixteen, then it would have sent uh, uh, six to itself, seven to itself, all the way through sixteen. However, we're thinking about this. Um, we could rewrite this as a composition of transpositions. Um, let's just write it as, let's see, two, four, followed by two, five. And let's double check that this really does give us the same permutation that we have over here. So, right, this is a composition of functions, a composition of permutations. And uh, function composition is read from, from right to left. And so if I wanted to know where, say, the number two goes with respect to uh, this composition, 
Well, this first function is going to pick two up and send it to five. And then this function is going to take that result, five, and fix it, right? Five, five goes to itself. So in total, two is moving to five and staying there. Well, that's exactly what this function does. Two goes to five. Similarly, five goes to two, but then this function picks two up and sends it to four. So all in all, five gets sent to four, which is exactly what this cycle does, what this permutation does. And finally, four, well, this function fixes four, sends it to itself, and this function sends the result four to two. So four goes to two, which is exactly what this cycle did as well. So how would we take care of this one? All right, so using the same process, we're gonna send, uh, let's send one to four, and then one to two, and one to three. Well, let's see. Just to verify, one goes to three and stays there and stays there. So in total, one goes to three, which is exactly what happens over here. Three goes to one. This function picks one up and sends it to two. And this function picks two up and fixes it, sends it to two. And so all in all, three goes to one, to two, to two. Three goes to two, which is exactly what this four cycle does. Two, this fixes it, this sends it to one. This picks the result of one up and sends it to four. So in total, two goes to four, which is exactly what this cycle does. And finally, four, this fixes four, this fixes four, and this sends four to one. That's exactly what that cycle does. And so these functions are identical. Let's try one more. Let's try a composition of two functions, and we'll just play the same game on both of these, All right? So for this first one, we'll send two to four, and then two to five. And then for this one, we'll send one to four, one to four, then one to two, and one to three. And if we check, we'll see that what this composition of functions does is identical to what this composition of functions does. Let's just, I don't want to check them all. Let's check uh, to see where two goes under each of these functions. Well, over here, this function sends two to four. This function sends four to two. So together, this composition of functions sends two to itself. It fixes two. Well, let's see what this does. Two is fixed, goes to one. One gets picked up and goes to four. This takes four and sends it to four. And this takes four and sends it to two. So in fact, two fixed, sent to one, sent to four, sent to two, two gets sent to two. So both functions fix two, and we'll see that uh, all of the other elements are sent to the same place as well. So notice the way the, pr the process we were using to, uh, to write a function as a product of transpositions, that process illustrates that Every n cycle, remember an n cycle is uh, a cycle with n elements in it. So this is a three cycle, this is a four cycle. This is a product of a three cycle with a four cycle. The process we've just used to express permutations as product of transpositions illustrates that every n cycle can be expressed using n minus one transpositions. And this three cycle can be written as a product of two transpositions, this four cycle can be written as a product of three transpositions. This three cycle can be written as a product of these two 
And then this four cycle can be written as a product of these three. Okay, so I don't know that we pointed that out before we left, but it's certainly the case. And uh, so let's see what we can do with some of this. So for example, two, five, four, this cycle, cycle that sends two to five, five to four, four to two, and leaves everything else fixed, that can be expressed as a product of transpositions in many ways. Now let's see, one of those, I'll just list them all here. This first one, using the procedure that we had just talked about, right, two going to four, two going to five, right, two goes to four, two goes to five. This is one way of writing this three cycle. But here's a product of four transpositions, which also, whenever we compose them together, gives us exactly the function that sends two to five, five to four, four to two, and leaves everything else fixed. In fact, you'll notice that uh, two, four, and two, five, well, those are the same ones that, that I had written here. And then I just threw in uh, a couple more transpositions. Well, one goes to three, and then one goes to three again. So these two essentially cancel each other out. Transpositions are their own inverses. And, uh, and so whenever I send one to three, and then this doesn't do anything to three, this sends three back to one again. So one goes to itself, which is exactly what the cycle does. And, uh, Everything else goes to where it went to with respect to this cycle. It can also just go crazy. Here's uh, here are eight transpositions, which whenever I compose them all together, does exactly the same thing that two, five, four does. All right, so I've expressed two, five, four as a product of two transpositions, as a product of four, Transpositions as a product of eight transpositions. Well, that illustrates a potential pattern, right? I don't know if you noticed it or not, but all of those, right? two, four, and eight transpositions, those are all even numbers of transpositions. So two, five, four can be expressed, well, at least in three different ways as a product of an even number of transpositions. Well, that begs a question. Is there a way to express 254 as the product of an odd number of transpositions? Seems to be on the surface, no reason why we shouldn't be able to do that. We just happen to hit on three different products of transpositions where the number of transpositions in each of those products was even. <laughs> But is it possible, and I encourage you to, before moving on, why don't you hit pause here for a moment and see if you can figure out a way to express 254 using an odd number of transpositions. Did you try? Well, if you did, surely you were unable to, uh, to find a way because in fact, the answer is no. It's not obvious that the answer is no. We're eventually going to prove this, not in, uh, not in this video, but we will prove it shortly. It will be the primary topic of our, of our next video. But for now, we're going to uh, go ahead and make that presumption. And in fact, we're going to, uh, we're going to state that every permutation can be expressed as the product. Well, we know every permutation can be expressed as the product of some trend, some number of transpositions. But as it turns out, every product, every permutation can be expressed as the product of, well, even either an even number of transpositions or an odd number of transpositions, but never both. If it can be expressed as a product of an even number of transpositions, it cannot be expressed. That's the product of an odd number. It can be expressed as the product of an odd number of transpositions. It cannot be expressed as the product of an even number of transpositions. 
It's very curious, and it's a very important and deep fact uh, that we will prove in our next video. But for now, whenever mathematicians find such a, uh, such a result, it usually prompts a definition, and that's certainly the case in this particular instance. So definition, right, we, uh, we call a permutation even if it can be expressed as the product of an even number of transpositions. You'll see I made a mistake here whenever I wrote this out at first. I had written permutations, product of an even number of permutations. That's a mistake I frequently make. I point that out to uh, caution you about it. Right? A transposition is a very special type of permutation. Every transposition is a permutation, but not every permutation is a transposition. But we call a permutation even if it can be expressed as the product of an even number of transpositions. Otherwise, we call it an odd permutation. Because in that case, we can express it as an odd number of transpositions. So here's a question for you. Consider the identity permutation for a moment, right? Remember, this is the notation we use for the identity permutation, the one that sends every element to itself. Is the identity permutation even or is it odd? I'm going to ask you to pause the video for just a moment and think about this for a, for a couple, of, uh, couple of minutes and then come back. Okay, did you come back? Did you think about it? Well, as it turns out, one is even. Why? Well, this is pretty straightforward. For any transposi transposition that you like, any transposition you write down, let's say the transposition position that sends one to three, that transposition is its own inverse, right? If I send one to three and then I use that same function to send three back to one again, well, that's sending one to one. It's sending three to three. And any other element that's being acted on is fixed. So every element goes to itself. So I can easily write the identity permutation as the product of any transposition composed with itself. Well, that's an even number of transpositions. And so since, it, since the identity permutation can be expressed as the product of an even number, two, an even number of transpositions, we call that permutation even. Of course, I could have written this using an odd number of transpositions. I'm sorry, beg your pardon. An another way is an even number of transpositions. Or I could go a little nuts here. One, three, one, three, two, seven, two, seven, and so on, right? There are infinitely many ways I could write this as a product of transpositions, but no matter what I pick, I'm always going to wind up with an even number of transpositions to, uh, to recover the identity permutation. Okay, so with all that in mind, I've got some homework for you. Uh, this all comes from my notes. So theorem number 147 in the notes says that uh, if A, B, and C, D are not disjoint, remember, disjoint means that they don't have anything in common. 1, 3, and 2, 7, for example. That's a pair of disjoint transpositions, right? This one contains 1 and 3. This one contains neither 1 nor 3. This contains two and seven. This contains neither two nor seven. They're disjoint. But we're talking up here about two transpositions that are not disjoint. And if they're not disjoint, 
then it turns out that their product, their composition, is either going to be the identity or it's going to be a three cycle. I want you to prove that. Right. Also, let's see, theorem number 156 in the notes says that the product of two even permutations is even, the product of two odd permutations is even, and the product of an even permutation with an odd permutation is an odd permutation. I want you to prove that. And then finally, theorem 157 says that if uh, G is a group whose elements are some of the permutations of the elements from one through N, and if H is a set that contains all, is the set that contains all of the even permutations in G, then H is a non-empty subgroup of G. Right, so H is exactly this uh, subset of G that, uh, that, uh, that contains exactly the even permutations in G, right? So whenever we have that, we wanna prove that H is in fact a subgroup of G. So those three for homework, and uh, we'll talk about those next time. So thank you for joining us on this first distance learning video. And uh, I look forward to uh, seeing you throughout the rest of the semester. Take care.